welcome to the woods. I was just about to start this video when a deer walked past and jumped over the fence in front of me. And she hasn't quite left yet. I can hear her stomping around in the background. Anyway, before we get down to the subject of this video, a little bit of housework. Firstly, I need to apologise for every single one of you that replied to the last video, left a comment, came up with those ideas. I'm still working my way through them. I've had a really busy week. Some of you will know I've uh, been tangled up in fencing, but there's been a lot of other stuff going on as well. And I just haven't had the time to sit down, go through all the comments, or leave a reply, which I kind of pride myself on. If you're good enough to leave a comment, good enough to watch what I'm saying, and listen to what I'm saying, then at least I can do is uh, reply. And I will get round to replying to all of you, so thank you for that, and please accept my apologies, but it will get done. The next thing I just want to touch on is why I started this channel and where we are now. And if you go right back to the beginning, and I know some of you were here then, I said that I was going to talk about living off grid, and I've done quite a bit of that. But I also wanted to discuss wider sociological situations and we've had a major one over the last two years which we've discussed and there were problems before that as well which we've touched on and what I wanted to do was open up a, a channel of communication between myself and you lot and see what ideas we had together in the hope that we could formulate some sane way of navigating through where we are and coming up with something that maybe is a little bit better than what's on offer. And this is video 90, I think. And I'm going to return to, in the next couple of videos, those 10 points you gave me and the ones you added on to that afterwards, solutions you were coming up with for the problems that we face, the economic system and how we might alter that, if possible, now, so that we have a foundation on which we can build going forward. So all of these things I'm going to return to in the next 10 videos and on video 100 I'm going to do an epic long one I'm hoping for probably about an hour's worth if I can get a few other people to chip in I will but by then I should be able to Put all of the information we've got, all the information you've come up with, all the different ideas. And we can paint a picture of what it is we actually want. And I've spoken about this before, which is, it's very important to have a destination. Because without that, it's difficult to know where you're going. You've got nothing to head towards. So I'm hoping we can paint that picture. We can fill in that destination. And give us something to aim for. So again, thank you for all your input. All your comments. And apologies for not getting back to you on the last one. It has been a very busy week. And so... To the matter at hand and this is something that's been on my mind for uh, on and off many years 
what is wrong with the right? Now I understand a lot of you won't buy into the left-right divide anymore, that things have moved well beyond that and I'm in agreement. But for the ease of this video we'll stick with right and left as descriptions of ideologies and ideas. And why do I think something is wrong with the right? Well, for 40 years, I've either been involved with, supported, or interested in politics and sociology. Usually of the right. And I've been a member of numerous political parties and organisations on the right of politics. Ranging from the mainstream down to tiny little groups that you've probably never heard of. And I can say without exception that all bar one splintered, disintegrated, disappeared and not because of uh, opposition from the left or competition from the left but because of their own infighting, disagreements and lack of I don't want to say motivation, but a weariness of never moving forward, which wears people out. And as I've said before, I became despondent myself with uh, political ideas from the right ever gaining ground. And it is discouraging when you realise that the ideas from the right gel so well with natural law, with nature itself, and yet we don't seem to be gaining any ground. Which caused me, and I'm sure it's caused many others in the past, to have a look at why that is. And I don't really think it's the fault of the left. It's more a fault with the right. And it's yet it's not really a fault. You see, I believe that the right attracts a certain type of people, a certain type of person. And they're usually stubborn, critical thinkers, usually intelligent, and the males are usually alpha, and because of this we end up with a situation where everyone thinks that they're right. Now they may capitulate every now and then, but on the whole, their ideas are the best. They're always going to believe they're in the right. And I saw this happen time and time again in uh, groups of people and organisations. <coughs> when you have strong-willed characters, which the right attract, with a degree of intelligence, no one likes to uh, play second fiddle. Everyone wants to be at the top. And eventually that leads to disunity.
that leads to a fracturing, which happened time and time again in different groups and political parties of the right throughout the last decades upon decades upon decades. And it's still happening today. Whereas the left, although there is fractures and splits, they do seem to be able to come together to fight a common enemy. And sadly, the right doesn't seem to be able to do that. So you end up with different factions that don't talk to each other, that believe that their way is the right way and anyone else is wrong. And it's much easier for the left to win in that situation. And it's a shame because there's ideas in all of these different groups on the right, which should be listened to. And it could be, again, down to the people that the right attracts. I think the people on the right are much more individualistic. I was going to use the word liberal, but I won't. But I think they are more individualistic. They don't particularly like collectivization. They like a small group. They like a clique, a vanguard, an elite. They don't particularly want it to grow too big and then moan when it doesn't grow too big or big enough and I think we need to come to some sort of realization that we need a balance between individualism and collectivism And we need to be able to not only offer platitudes to other ideas, but to openly listen and to be able to concede when those ideas may be better than ours. And I'm not talking about listening to people from the left, although we should, but just to those commentators on the right. Together, it would be quite a phenomenal force. Whereas as it is today, we even found it difficult to agree on how to move forward under the COVID situation. Different groups expressing different opinions, tied to different ideologies, arguing, backstabbing, slating. And this isn't something you actually see coming from the left. So we do need to be able to put minor differences aside in order to move forward. It's a balance between 
individualism and collectivism. Both of which have their merits and both of which have their downsides. I'd be interested to hear what you've got to say. Why do you think it is that the right finds it so difficult to move forward, to stay united, or even to unite? It's an interesting subject, and I've heard quite a few views on it in the past. But as I'm talking to you, I'd like to hear what you've got to say. And not just why you think it's happening, but how you think we can avoid it in the future. And maybe combat it now. I do think it's down to the people that the right attracts and not to any given ideology. And I've seen it right down into the smallest groups that have a, an overriding idea of what it is they want to do. But each individual within that group feels very strongly that their way would be best, that their way would be right. And I've been guilty of this myself. But it does lead to disunity. And that's no way to move forward. And I think, as well as the type of people who are all strong-willed, who aren't natural followers. This is why we're attracted to the right. We're attracted to those ideas that are on the periphery. Because we understand that what's going on today isn't right. It isn't correct. So the type of people and a lack of a unifying destination. With all of these different groups having their own idea on where that should be, and because the destinations are all different, the road there is different. all walking different paths, all to slightly different destinations, and unable to pull together, unable to unify into a movement, into an ideology, into a group of people who could share ideas. But maybe if we can get that destination nailed down, Maybe that's a start. So I'm going to end this one here, because I've still got a lot to do. But please, drop a comment. I know I didn't get back to you last time, but hopefully I'll have time to sit down, reply to all the comments on the last video, and these as well, in the next two or three days. But help me out. Give me some feedback. Hit the like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed. And we're going to have a good, a good hit in the next 10 videos of putting something together for our future. That destination for us to move towards. 
not come from one person, but from many. All walks of life. Many thanks you lot. Bear with me in the busy period. It's a beautiful day here. Thank you for listening and I'll catch you all soon.